Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple um, furnace. It doesn't have an on-off state. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to do that with um, Mcrater at this point in time. Um, however, we are going to just make a basic uh, furnace. So we're going to create a block and we're going to call it uh, Block Blast. I've already imported the textures that we need so we're just going to use those textures and I'm going to select the on one the sides and then I'm going to select the rotation based on uh, rotation from player side and then the SWNE for the rotation that's the the way furnaces rotate uh, we don't need um, to select any of that. And we're good for there. So furnaces actually have a different um, breaking and explosion values. You can find these values on um, Minecraft Wiki. I'll leave them in the description so you can check that out. So breaking is 3.5, which is also hardness. And the other one is... 17.5 so that's resistance uh, we want to put the furnace under decorations tab we don't want it to be affected by silk touch and we want to give it a GUI name so furnace uh, we want it to be equal to stone uh, we're going to give it a light value of 0 0.5. I don't really know what um, light level 13 is. We're just going to say it's 0 0.5. You want you might want to play around with it. You want to um, change the harvest level or harvest level to break to 0. I think it will still require a stone pickaxe though. And smelting we're going to set to 100 for tick rate. This will be important uh, in a couple minutes or so and we're going to click next and next and we want a GY we want it to have three inventories and our second um, ID is going to be two and that's going to be our um, output slot so we can click next and finally next and next all right so we got that in we need a gui now so gui blast furnace and we're going to select our blast furnace uh, block for the gui and we're going to open it up now we need three inventories two input slots and two or one output slot so we're going to select that this is going to be id zero so we need to leave it inherited and all this other stuff. That's fine the way it is. I'm going to turn on snapping to grid so we can actually align it properly. And I'm going to put it right about here. We need our other input slot. So input slot one. And I'm going to put that over here. And we need one output slot, which is our ID two. I'm going to put that over here. And just to make it a little bit nicer, we're going to add a label. I'm going to call it Blast Furnace. I'm going to change the color to um, an RBG scale of 64 across the board. So like this. This will give you the exact color Minecraft uses for their text on the GUI. And we're just going to also set the offset for Y to... 30 and I'm going to just place it down here. That will align it with um, pretty much a nice location where it, it's not too um, in the way and stuff. It looks good. So once you got that all done, uh, you can click Save Changes and Next. And that's all set up. We now need to create a procedure to open the GUI. So I'm going to go and click procedure and then go procedure um, last 
furnace open. And what we need to do is go to player and then open GUI. And that's all good, so just save that. So what we want to do is go back into the block now. And we're going to go over where procedures are. And we're going to click on on click, on right click, pardon me. Or on block right click. And we're going to select our open. And we're going to click next and next. So that's all good now. Um, now what we need to do is actually code in the crafting recipes and stuff for the um, furnace. Now I'm not entirely sure how to do multiple recipes uh, at this time. Uh, I might be able to figure it out further in the future, but um, we're just going to create one at this uh, for this tutorial. And so what you want to do is it's all procedure based. And we're gonna go procedure uh, blast furnace um, crafting. We're gonna click procedure. So it's hard to explain how AND gates and stuff work, but um, we're gonna be using not so much if statements. It's a weird concept. I thought you could just test things by putting if statements inside of them and I did test that and it didn't work. So you're going to have to use a little bit of a different method in order to make it work properly. So I'm going to explain it as, as clear as I can. So the couple things that you're going to need is um, a couple operators. You're going to be mainly using the light blue operator here. And uh, this one has an AND and OR gate built into it. So we're going to add that there. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to put one in here. We also want to change this to AND and this to AND. And then finally, we want to duplicate this one more time and put this over here at the other slot and go OR. And that's the basic um, setup that you'll need for this furnace. Um, we're not going to worry about do right now but we do need to add a few other things. First off, if you go to block, we well, can go and search down where it gets, um, where is it? Get block from inventory, or get item from slot zero, which is our uh, smelting slot. And what we want to do now is select our item block um, equal equals procedure or operator. We're going to click that, whoops, and we're going to go to Minecraft components and drop this down here. So I'm just going to make a quick um, recipe on smelting, uh, let's say, oh, um, we're going to smell iron and we're gonna place that down in here. So basically what this is doing is it's testing for iron ore in slot zero. And if that's true, and it will check for another procedure. So that's what it's doing right here. It's checking for an additional condition. So it's checking for this in slot zero. Iron has to be in slot zero. If it's not in slot zero, it's not gonna do anything. And then it's going to check for another item, which is our um, fuel slot. So we're going to put that over here. We're just going to clone it. And I did it again. Uh, we want to change the slot item or slot item from get item from slot one, which is our fuel. And what we want to put in here is some sort of fuel item. Uh, in this case, I am going to use magma blocks because it <laughs> it looks like a fuel source, honestly, but um, it isn't really. So if this is in the slot zero, then it's also going to continue doing the procedure. So we're going to go back to blocks now, and um, what we need to do is actually duplicate this. And I'm going to select... Um, 
put this basically at the first or was it the second? I think it's the second one. So we're going to put that in the second one here. And we're going to test for iron ignits. And this needs to be slot two. If it so basically what's going on here now is once it checks for these both being correct, it's also going to check to see if um, there's something in the um, output slot, but it has to be a specific item in the output slot or it won't work. Uh, we're going to be configuring it so it will add to the item that's already in the slot and that's why we need to test for this. So to do that we go back to blocks and if we scroll down to uh, get number of items in um, output slot. So we're going to do that and we're also going to need believe there's a math operator it's this operator and a math yeah this is the one you need so I'm going to whoops okay so like that I'm actually gonna make it in line so it's easier to uh, see so okay there we go it's a little easier to see now <clears throat> so uh, we're testing basically if there's iron ore in slot zero if it's true then it will also check for uh, if it's true then it will also check for item um, in slot one which is magma blocks and if that's true then it will also because this is connected to both of these outputs then it will also check um, if um, slot two um, item from slot two it has a zero items and or so if it has zero items then it will also or if it does have items, then it'll check to see if there's iron ignits in it as well. So this is basically what it is. So if there's items, it'll check to see if it's the right item. If there is no items, then it'll just continue. And if all that is true, then what it's going to do is output something that we're going to be creating in just a second. So we want to go to block again, and we want to go to um, set... Um, set block or set two uh, in slot two and we want iron ignits so I just need to find that uh, we're actually going to remove the two right here and we're going to add a math operator and we're going to get the number as well so slot 2 and this will basically check to see if there is um, an item in there and it's going to get the value of the item in slot 2 and then it's going to add additional 2 to it and then it's going to be uh, adding the iron so that's good uh, we still need to remove though the uh, iron ore and the magma block as well so what we're going to do is go to um, block again and we're going to remove this time and we're going to remove one from slot zero and we're going to duplicate that and remove one from slot one and that's pretty much all there is to it um, for configuring it so that's all good. We're going to click next. And once this is finished, uh, we can go back to our furnace. And uh, we're going to procedures and we're going to also go for update tick and crafting. And we're going to click next. Next. And now we need a recipe to create this uh, block. 
So I'm going to select uh, recipe. And we're just going to create a quick recipe. Um, just by putting a furnace in the crafting table, we'll be able to upgrade it. We're going to make it shapeless so we can put it anywhere. And we're going to click next. And now that's pretty much all you need to do for creating a custom furnace. I'll just test it in game in just a second. Um, we're just loading it up, uh, finishing it, letting it compile, and now we're going to load up the test environment. And we're going to test it out. And I actually haven't um, tested to see if it will work using update ticks, so this will be a little bit new. And if it does, that's pretty cool too. Uh, the tick rate um, for the block will depend on how long your smelting will take. So this is actually quite important uh, when it's um, at a higher number, it'll take longer. Uh, there's 20 ticks in a second, I believe, in Minecraft, so uh, you want to times things by 20 um, 20 to make a second, depending on how long your duration will you want it to be. So we're going to create a new world, and I'm just going to go in creative just to make things a lot easier. And we're going to go to wherever it spawns us, I guess. It could be on the water, it could be on land, you never know. And we're in a forest today, so we're just going to go over here where it's a little easier to move around. And I'm going to go down here and select this. As you can see, um, it will rotate with the player now. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to place that down. As you can see, our GUI is perfectly fine. Uh, we need iron ore and a magma block. And it'll take some time to actually smelt, but as you can see, it smelts it, and you can just take it out of your inventory. So hopefully that helped. You might want to delay the time a little bit too. Uh, we're also going to just quickly um, grab a bunch, uh, 32 to be exact, and 32 of that. So I just want to see if it will add on to it and it does so that's good so yeah that's basically how you make a custom furnace uh, for a specific item um, like I said if I find out um, if I find out how to um, basically make a crafting station that will accept multiple items then I will um, make a tutorial for it but right now I just wanted to get the custom furnace out and uh, that's the easiest way to make a furnace. You're going to need multiple furnaces, sadly, right now, uh, until I get a reply from someone on the forums, but uh, there's a forest fire over there. Um, also, I'm going to be leaving the um, a link in the description to a media fire for the workspace. Uh, you guys will be able to um, learn uh, by downloading and then uh, importing it into one of your workspaces here. And then from there, you can basically learn how everything's set up. I find that um, providing a workspace is a little bit easier for people to learn and follow along. So I'll definitely try to do that more often um, for more complex things and stuff. So hopefully that helped. Um, but yeah, outside of that, hopefully that helped. If you like the video, definitely uh, subscribe and comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching and peace out.